Hi everyone, welcome to Sintida's YouTube channel. My name is Nick Pavlov and in this video I would like to explore some of the elements and features available in a Microsoft Fabric workspace. So far we have learned how to upload data to our lake house and turn it into tables. We also know how to connect to these tables from Power BI or other client tools to perform analysis and, and build reports. Now let's take a look at other fabric elements, understand what they are and how we can use them. A workplace is one of the most basic things in Power BI. It is a place where users can create different items such as lake houses, data sets, reports, dashboards, and these items are meant to be shared. So by nature, workspaces are designed for collaboration. That's why it is a best practice to keep them organized and properly managed. Now, before looking at workspace elements, let me take a quick pause and talk about Microsoft Fabric Personas. Fabric supports all kinds of different workloads because it's designed as one data platform for different users. Power BI developers, data engineers, data scientists, etc. And all of these people or personas will often use different tools. Because you have all of these different tools for different personas, things quickly can get confusing, especially if you have not used some of these tools in the past. So to avoid users' confusion and to keep workspaces more organized, Microsoft introduced this thing called personas. With these personas, you can get a tailored user experience when working with Fabric. So if you go to the bottom left corner of the screen, there you can change your persona. For me, for example, right now it is Power BI. So if I select, for example, a data factory, and then I will go to my workspace, and then click Add New Item, then I will see a list of items and tasks that are tailored to data engineers. They will be different from those of a Power BI persona. And so if I click to Data Engineer, Data Science, Warehouse, I will have a little bit of a different UI look. Of course, if I select a show all, then I will be in this screen where I have all of the tasks for all of the personas. So if you cannot find an item that you need to work with, then you can always go to show all and find all of the tasks and items available in Microsoft Fabric. Okay, let me go back to the Power BI persona. Power BI is the tool that I have been working with the most, so I prefer being the Power BI persona. So if you click on a workspace, you will see all of the items that you created. These include pipelines, data flows that we used to get our data in our previous videos, the lake house itself, the SQL endpoint, and data set. Keep in mind that the SQL endpoint and data set are both created automatically when you create a lake house. As you start having a lot of items in your workspace, I recommend using the filter option right here. And here you can pick and choose uh, whatever item you're looking for. For example, if I click Lake House, I will only see my lake houses. This is a very helpful tool. Now, if we look at the top right corner of the screen, we can find the lineage view. This view helps you to see and understand how your data and reports are connected. So if you want answers to the questions like, what comes from where, in which reports will be affected if I modify this data set, then you can get that from the lineage view. For example, my test report that I built in last video is connected to a data set called AdventureWorks, which is connected to a lake house called Demo AdventureWorks. Let me go back to my list view and talk about renaming. You can see that I have been pretty bad at using uh, the proper naming conventions, right? I have data flows one and two and pipelines one and two. And in real life, you would want to have a proper naming convention. So people, especially other people who work with you in this workspace, they know what comes from where. So I highly recommend naming your items properly. To do that, what you can do is uh, you can uh, click to three dots in here for more options and then choose properties 
and this will open uh, the name and the description sections for your element. So you can go ahead and change that to data flow to get whatever data you got. Like I forgot what this was exactly. I'm not going to rename this for now, right? Uh, but you can also add description and, th and then save that. And then this will be saved and you will have the right naming for your data flow. Now, another way to do that will be click on an item itself. And once you're here, in the top left corner, you will see the name of this item and then click the downward arrow in here to expand this. And then right here, you can also change the name of your data flow. This was to get the, the Excel file, right? So I can change this to data flow uh, to get sample Excel Superstore. Something like that, so it makes more sense, and I actually remember what it was, you know, next week. After renaming your item, your data flow in this case, you don't have to publish this because if you published it, the whole data flow will run again. So you can just go come here and then X out. Yes, I am sure, and then my data flow has been renamed. Now, if I click the new button, then I can see the list of items that I can add, right? Again, this is for the Power BI persona. These are the tools that a Power BI a developer will most likely use more often. But if you want to see everything, you can click show all. Using the upload button, you can upload other Power BI files here or Excel files, or you can get files from SharePoint, that kind of stuff, right? So you can upload files to your workspace. Now create deployment pipeline. Most of you probably will not have that, but if you're an admin of a workspace, then you can see the create deployment pipelines. Large organizations often have multiple environments. That is done so that building and testing activities do not impact a production environment. So to separate these environments, different deployment pipelines can be created and managed separately. But this is outside the scope of this video and I will not be getting into the weeds of it. It's a separate, different conversation. Now create app. This is a standard feature that has been available in Power BI for a while. Basically using this, you can create an app that can be shared with a large number of people within or outside of your organization. This is a good option if you do not want to give everyone editing rights and you can also pick and choose which reports and pages you would like to share. For example, you can put different pages from different reports in one app and then share it with your business users. So it's easier for them to navigate through the app, right? They don't have to go to your report and, and try to understand what page is where. Now, if I click to ellipses here for more, I have Manage Access and Workspace Settings. Manage Access, here you can manage who can do what in a workspace so teams can collaborate. You can assign different roles and grant access. Right now, I am the only one who can work in this workspace, right? This is a test workspace, but I can go here to add people and then I can add someone from my organization. So if I added Christian, then he will receive an email that he was invited to this workspace to work with me on certain projects. In workspace settings, this is also a standard feature that is available in Power BI. So these settings include basic information of a workspace, the description of it, the contact list, OneDrive, the information about licenses, right? Azure connections, storage. This is an introduction video, so I will not be going into the details about these features. However, I will include a link to a detailed Microsoft documentation in the description section so you can uh, read about the workspace settings. All right, that was it for this video. I have shown you some of the elements and features available in a Microsoft Fabric workspace. So hopefully now you have a better understanding what all of these elements are, what all of these buttons do, and how you can create new items. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.